So the, uh, the, the world of uh, data is becoming central to, I guess, many, you know, much of what you, you all do on, on a day-to-day on a -day basis. And the idea of the, the theme of this year's SQL Relay, Learn, Grow, and Adapt, um, is particularly apt. Because as you know, the world of data becomes more important, the range of different things that you need to learn about, understand, and build into the work that you would do on a day-to-day -day basis grows exponentially. We look at it from the point of view of the, the way that our platform and the technology that we deliver into the, into the world grows. But on top of that, there are a whole bunch of organizational policy, process, security issues that are starting to impact on everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think the great thing about these events and the fact that you choose to come along to these events is that it kind of shows that you're really leading the charge with respect to what needs to change, how things need to be done differently, and the opportunity here for you all as leaders, if you like, to learn about um, both what your peers are doing and what you know the, the network of vendors, including Microsoft, are doing to support your efforts is a great opportunity for, for all of us. So I'm delighted you've all come. It's great to get an opportunity to talk to you, and it's great for you to be able to see what's going on you know, as I said, across your peer network and the other and the other vendors in, in this space. So, I, as Steph said, I look after the, the data platform business in the UK. Um, John Woodward, who's on the side there, also is a colleague of mine who looks after the analytics and BI part of the business. Um, and one of the areas that we're going to focus on today <laughs> in, in, the, in the keynote, some of the other stuff that we're doing, is, is this idea of data culture, which includes both technology as well as all of the other soft aspects of how people really um, exploit data and really make the most of it. So hands up in the room, Who, who's responsible for managing a large, large volume of operational data? I'm assuming the majority of you. Okay. Um, how about data warehousing and reporting? Who's, who spends their time doing that type of activity? Yeah, okay, a good number of you, great. BI, um, you know, end user self-service discovery, you know, those aspects, okay, a good number of you there. How about advanced analytics? So who stepped uh, into that space or, or trying it out? A small number of you, okay, well congratulations for making a start. And this is again a key area that, you know, is undergoing significant change. Um, and it's an opportunity for everybody, if you like, to really stretch themselves and stretch the way their organizations are working in, in respect of using data uh, really, really effectively. So we have a now not so new, but relatively new uh, chief exec, and one of the um, <coughs> pronouncements that he made very early on in his tenure, actually whilst he, he was involved in the launch of SQL Server 2014, was really around two, two things. So one is the idea of ambient intelligence. So you know this is the idea that actually, due to the kind of pervasiveness now of, the, of microprocessor and other kind of information technologies, the world around us is becoming more and more instrumented, enabled, and exposed to uh, and producing data. And this creates a huge opportunity for us and organizations to deliver what, um, what he called and what we're, what we're calling a data culture. Uh, and that's the idea that organizations are able to build their entire being around the idea that data is both informing what they do, uh, determining how they plan for the future, and allowing them to analyze in detail how they're operationally performing right now. And if uh, organizations build out that data culture, then you know, there is a huge opportunity for them to improve, uh, improve performance, both in terms of the mission of their you know, the mission of their organization, but also how they integrate, integrate with stakeholders and, and customers and other, other parts of their, their broader ecosystem. We, to support that idea of data culture, we did some work with IDC about a year and a half ago now to really drill, in, drill into the idea of a data culture and understand what that is actually meaning to organizations today. And what IDC discovered was that there is genuinely a data dividend out there, globally around, around $1.6 trillion of new value that organizations can deliver. And the, the, that dividend is, is, is already being captured by organizations that are doing a better than average job of using data. So whether it be a combination of using more diverse types of data, using new types of analytics, enabling more people in the organization to get access to the insight that comes about from those, those new types of analytics 
And doing that at speed is differentiating organizations. And it's those, those more uh, advanced organizations that are in a position to capture that data dividend. The data dividend can be delivered through a combination of things like employee productivity, innovative new business models, um, and operational enhancements and performance improvements. But there is a very real opportunity for organizations, whether they are in the commercial sector or public sector, to deliver significant net new value by using data more effectively. Microsoft is going through its own transformation at the moment. So we've moved now to a world view of mobile first, cloud first. So you'll see and you will have seen that the vast majority of the work that we're doing now, in some sense or other, accrues towards a mobile or cloud first world from a technology point of view. But we're also focused on how data plays an important part of that. So within all of the solutions, services and products that we're delivering, Data is now a more and more integral part of the way that we deliver those products and the way that we deliver them as services to you as, as, as customers. And that cuts across both the platform products, so SQL, Azure, and such like, but also all of our productivity enhancing uh, products like you know, Windows and, and Office and such like. So data is at the core of how we think about um, the, the, the core part of engineering delivering services to you. Some examples of how that's really transpiring. So Skype. We recently introduced simultaneous real-time translation, so you can now converse with people um, who speak, a, you know, who don't speak your native tongue in real time using Skype. Um, Delve, as a uh, as a component of Office 365, builds on the idea of a large graph database that maps the relationships within the organisation and maps what you're interested in, maps other people in the organisation, maybe outside of your core team who are all also interested in doing the same kind of activity so that it can surface information more effectively and make you more productive. Um, again, built on the idea of data. Uh, Cortana um, is very heavily you know, data-centric in the sense that it's, it's building a lot of its insight and intelligence and ability to advise you and guide you as an individual, as a sort of personal assistant, by building a deep understanding of how you work, how you run your life, what your kind of travel patterns are like, and how it can best guide you and improve the kind of productivity of your life. And all of these things are examples of how the, the kind of experience that's provided by those services is being changed by the way that we are using, uh, using data within the, uh, within the product uh, development and delivery. So another question for you. Four companies there, very different industries. What are they all having in common? So we've got Uber, sorry, Uber, Facebook, Airbnb, Alibaba. Anybody want to hazard a guess? Okay, so the one thing they have in common is that all of their business models is based on the idea of a data culture. So the, the common theme of all of them is that they're in an industry that they've disrupted. So Uber, taxi company with no cars. Facebook, content company with no, with no content. Airbnb, a hotel organization with no real estate. So they've entered into an industry that has a traditional business model and completely changed that model by the way that they use both data and mobile cloud services to, 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 to deliver a brand new business model with significantly enhanced customer service. And the opportunity is there for everybody to, to take those kind of ideas and, and, uh, and, and deliver them into your, into your industry. So when we look at it from a platform point of view, um, how does that impact on the way that we think about um, mm -hmm what we deliver as a platform. Um, so as you'll see, you know, our data platform now is an awful lot more than the core platform around SQL Server. You know, when we started these kind of events four or five years ago, we would spend pretty much the entire time talking about SQL Server and you know, the various aspects of that platform, which is still a large and complex platform. But now we've got three tracks at this event that are now touching a whole range of other parts of the, data, the broader data platform and looking at things that just were not even part of the thinking four or five years ago. So when we look at collecting and managing data, we're not only now worried about relational data, we're also worried about non-relational, you know, semi-structured, unstructured, document-oriented type data, real-time data, you know, from all of the instruments and devices that we have the opportunity to work with, and also the data, the fact that data is now dispersed. So for a lot of organizations who are investing in SaaS applications, your data is now dispersed among a number of kind of cloud environments, and therefore there's a question 
that everybody needs to tackle, which is well, how do you create a single view of data that is physically dispersed around a number of, uh, a number of different environments. Transforming and analyzing that data is now core to the, to the life cycle of the data that, and, the, and the work that you need to do. And so on top of the, the work around orchestration, around modeling, and you know, information man management and data quality, we're adding new aspects around complex event processing, which worries about not just the data, but also the time windows in which that data you know, is relevant and arriving. And also machine learning, which is a kind of you know, broad topic that covers a range of different parts of the platform, you know, ranging from the work that we're doing to integrate R into, into SQL Server, right through to Azure, with the Azure machine learning uh, platform that, uh, that Andrew and Amy are going to talk about in their workshop later on. So there's a huge swathe of new capabilities that are coming, um, coming along and in, in, in release already that really focus on what that life cycle is of how you, how you transform and analyze it. And then from a point of view of where the, the information hits the, hits the end users, not only have we got a whole significant new style and set of applications that you're all building that in, in, implement new kind of social interactions, new uh, machine learning based interactions with organizations, but we're also advancing the way that people think about dashboards, the way they think about you know, delivering information to non-expert users through things like natural language query. So how do we make information accessible to people who traditionally would have preferred to pour over that standard report that they've seen for every day or every week for the last, uh, the last three or four years. We want to encourage through that um, process, you know, people to become more inquisitive about data and find things out that are relevant to, to, their, uh, to their role. So you can see here that platform has grown exponentially over the last three or four years, and that whole platform becomes core to delivering this, uh, this data culture. So what does that actually mean? So there's now, you know, we've got our core, core product, SQL Server, which I'll touch on again in a second, but now we're surrounded by, you know, a whole plethora of new products that, you know, even we, we, I was, I would, I would get sort of weekly disclosures from the core engineering teams about um, things that are being announced or coming down the, down the pipe. And I was commenting today that I was looking through the most recent disclosure, and they're now so long, that it's almost impossible even for us to stay up to date with exactly what's being delivered every, uh, every week. But those um, are all important parts, the, the, the platform, the other parts of the platform are all important parts to delivering a, a platform for data culture and therefore it's our obligation to you, if you like, to help you understand what they are and help you understand how you can best uh, deploy and, uh, and, and use them to, to drive the value in your, in your data. So a few examples of things that we've done recently. So Revolution Analytics, who of you in, in the room use R on a day-to-day -day basis? So a few, a few of you. Um, so Revolution Analytics, um, we acquired them about what, six months or so ago now. The reason being is that they um, provide probably one of the most industrial strength implementations of R. Um, we've acquired, those to acquired them to integrate that platform into both our cloud and SQL Server platforms. And the reason this is so important is because R is a great example of a community-driven language and a community-driven movement, almost, that has created huge amounts of innovation and being able to capture that innovation and make it available for customers of the, of the Microsoft uh, data platform <coughs> is something that obviously we care about very deeply and therefore you should expect to see you know, that, uh, that capability being integrated into the platform over the course of the next six to nine months or so. Datazen, um, another, another acquisition, you know, very targeted around the idea of mobile end user dashboards and, and mobile BI, but again provides a great um, free tool that comes with the SQL Server Enterprise Edition to be able to deliver new kinds of dashboard insights to people that are on the, on the move and want to have access to your data through you know, various different, uh, different mobile devices. Power BI. This is the core Microsoft platform for the creation, self-service discovery, and visualization of, of your information. And again, that's something that uh, we've introduced uh, the second release of that in the last six months or so. That's another example of a service that is literally changing on a, on a weekly basis. So we'd encourage you to, to look at that if you're interested in 
delivering a platform or tool to your end users that enable them to be inquisitive about data, to be able to share, collaborate on different types of data, to be able to build their own visualizations, and to be able to explore how data is related to each other and, and what new information they can uh, discern from, from playing around and, and really you know, digging into the, the information they have access to. The Cortana Analytics Suite, again, this is a high-end um, platform piece that's really targeted towards the data science community. So if you've got um, people in the organization who really need to have a very comprehensive, very powerful tool set that enable them to use things like you know, big data, machine learning, data visualization technologies to build very advanced uh, you know, analytical applications, then Cortana Analytics Suite is a great package of, of, of services that give people the, the capability to, to, to do that. And then IoT Suite, so again, thinking back to this idea of ambient intelligence, if you've got scenarios where you've got a large number of devices that you have the opportunity of both managing and capturing the information from, then IoT Suite gives you a way of being able to target that uh, device um, portfolio manage, capture, and organize the information that, um, that is available from, from those devices, and do that in real time. So if you've got uh, examples of where you really need to be processing events in real time, then uh, that's a great tool for, for doing that. <coughs> data Lake is a great new concept that's kind of grown out of the big data movement, and the Azure Data Lake is a great you know, implementation of that, uh, which gives you the ability where you've got large amounts of information coming in, to the organization that you're not clear yet on what you're going to do with, then Data Lake provides you with a very local storage platform to put that data in whilst you're figuring out what you're going to do with it. And then on top of that, you can use a range of different <coughs> analytical uh, tools to be able to process that, process that data in different ways once you've decided what you want to do with it, and, uh, and, and then you know, create the, the, the relevant uh, output, which you can then push into the, into the remainder of your, of your business processes. But this is key for the idea of schema, you know, schema on read type processing of, of data uh, in, in within your, your data lifecycle. And then last but not least, the SQL Server. So, um, so the SQL Server is core you know, to our investment and the platform that we're building. We'll do some sessions today on SQL Server 2016. You know, there's a lot more you know, coming along in that platform. 2016 is probably the biggest release that we have ever, have ever done. But actually overnight, one of the things that um, I wanted to kind of just announce today or talk to you about today, overnight um, uh, Gartner has actually uh, released a new version of their operational DBMS Magic Quadrant. So for those of you who know and look at that on a, uh, on a regular basis, this is how Gartner talk about um, the relative um, the relative placement, if you like, can allow people to understand how best they are going to select uh, data, uh, database platforms for doing the kind of work that they're doing and how they, they guide their clients on how they select um, platforms. Being in the leaders project is great. You know, Gartner talked about how they, they have relative you know, ways of differentiating people across these different quadrants. And there's always a big competition, if you like, in terms of where people sit on the leaders quadrant. Um, and you know the, the great thing that was announced last night is that for the first time ever, now Microsoft is top right, you know, and ahead of all of the other vendors in terms of operational DBMS uh, platforms. And this has really come about as a consequence of the investment that we've made from a cloud point of view, from an analytics point of view, and the core investments that we've made in the engine of SQL Server over the last four or five years um, that have now finally enabled us enabled us to be. In that, you know, in that true leadership position uh, in the industry, which obviously we're really proud about. <coughs> uh, it's great to be able to, to talk to you about that, uh, that today. So, with that, just to remind you, we've got the hashtag data culture, which um, you can use to participate in the conversations around this idea of data culture and how we, how we really find that data dividend and exploit it. We've got a whole bunch of events that you can uh, come to following the relay events that, that are running across the country. There's a small URL at the bottom there, um, a bit.ly uh, URL NSFT data culture, where you can go to find out more detail on all of those events and register for ones that are appropriate to you. And then finally, future, future decoded. Um, day two, if you've not already, already registered, we're, I think we're very close to running out of spaces, but um, there may be some uh, opportunity for you to, uh, 
to register on day two. This is our really big sort of premier event where we've got a whole day dedicated to uh, the kind of um, you know the technology of, of data and how people can, can use it. So with that, I think I'm out of time. Um, just want to thank you very much again for coming along. Make sure that you use the day uh, well to kind of peer network and, and learn about what's next for the uh, for the data platform. Thank you very much.